بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فائیو زیرو نائن زیرو او لیول ایٹ آلس ورکس فور آئی جی سی ایس سی این جی سی ایس سی بائیولوجی وی گونٹ ٹو بی ڈنگ چپٹر سکسٹین پوائنٹ فور وچ از سیکشول ریپروڈکشن ان ہیومنس آف کورس اٹ کوڈ بی ان ادر چیپٹر ان دی ادر سلیبس از بٹ بیسکلی دا ہیڈنگ وڈ بی سیکشول ریپروڈکشن ان ہیومنس دس از وی آر ڈوئنگ دا سلیبس ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری لیٹ اسٹارٹ What do we have in the syllabus? Now, these two points which I have uh, in green, these are the new things in the syllabus. These were not in the previous syllabus. So, identify on diagrams the male reproductive system. Identify on diagrams the female reproductive system. But you have to know their functions as well and you have to identify their names. So, you must know the names. You must be able to identify on a diagram. So, you must look at a number of diagrams and then draw a diagram and then label them. And then you must know their functions. Then explain the structure of a sperm cell as related to its function limited to flagellum, mitochondria and enzymes in the acrosome. This is new as well, slightly new. Explain how the structure of an egg cell is related to its function limited to energy stores and the jelly coat that changes at fertilization. Slightly new. Describe fertilization as a fusion of the nuclei from a male gamete. So only the mu nucleus from the male gamete and the female gamete cell fuses. Then compare male and female gametes in terms of size, structure, numbers and motility. This is also old syllabus. Uh, now new in the syllabus is 7 which is described the role of testosterone and estrogen in the development and regulation of secondary sexual characteristics during puberty. Now this was of course new in this syllabus. Then describe the menstrual cycle that's old. Then explain the role of FSH and LH, estrogen and progesterone in controlling the menstrual cycle. So this is also in the old syllabus. Describe the early development of the zygote, limit to the formation of a ball of cells, which is called the embryo, that becomes implanted in the lining of the uterus. Then state the functions of the amniotic sac and the amniotic fluid. Identify on diagrams placenta, umbilical cord. Describe the functions in relationship to the exchange of dissolved nutrients, gases and excretory products between the blood of the mother and the blood of the fetus. You know that the blood of the mother and the fetus should never mix because they could be different blood groups. They could be the same as well, but there is a possibility that they could be different. State that some viruses can pass across the placenta and affect the fetus. Now this is of course again new in the syllabus. So let's continue with this syllabus and I hope this chapter becomes a little clearer and better understood as we go along. Now if you look at the female reproductive system, now you can see there are basically uh, what we have to understand is that the ovary which is the reproductive organ where meiosis is going to take place. So only in the ovaries will meiosis take place which is the reduction division. Why? Because the ovum has to be produced and the ovum has to be a haploid. It has to have half the number of chromosomes so it has to be haploid. Why? Because when the fertilization takes place and it fuses with the sperm, so the diploid number is restored. If you look at my old uh, videos on this chapter, we've talked about this many times. So what do we have here? We have the ovaries. Then the important thing you've got to understand is the fallopian tubes. And these are tubes which are also called oviducts. So we also call them oviducts. There are two oviducts, one on either side. Uh, the fallopian tube and then we have the uterus which is the hollow organ where the fetus is going to develop we don't say the baby baby when it's called when it's born so the fetus is going to develop here so the ovary and then the fallopian tubes has this fimbrial end or we say fimbrial finger like projections so you can see here very nice diagram to show you that then the inner lining of the uterus is called the endometrium and the myometrium is the muscle layer in the wall of the uterus, which of course contracts and relaxes when the baby has to be delivered, when the fetus has to be passed out and then it's called a baby. Then the ring of muscle which is surrounding the opening of the uh, uterus is called the cervix. And the area where it opens is called the vagina. Vagina and word is coming from the word invagination. So this space here is a sort of an invagination. So this is where the, um, the baby is going to, when the baby is born, it passes through this canal, uh, the cervix opens up and the baby is passed out through this uh, vaginal tract. Now, so these are the different, we're going to study the functions of it and then we're going to understand the details of this. 
Now the male reproductive system is made up of again testes and the testes are two, one on either side and then there is a scrotum which is a skin covering it which actually protects it because the testes are outside the abdominal cavity, they have to be kept at a lower temperature. And then we have an area which is called the epididymis where the sperms which are made in the testes are stored here in the epididymis. And then you have a tube which carries it and this tube is called the vas deferens and the other word for it is sperm duct. You don't have to know the name vas deferens but that's why the when we do surgery on these and that is called vasectomy. Uh, when a couple doesn't want to have any more children so we can tie these sperm ducts and the man will be fine but his sperms will not reach the female tract. So this is a form of uh, birth control. This is a form of birth control in which we do surgical, you know, cutting of the sperm ducts. So the other name for the sperm ducts is vas deferens, but you have to learn the word sperm ducts, which are going to carry the sperms which are produced here. They'll be stored in the epididymis and then they'll be transferred here and then they will enter the urethra. So you have to know the urethra, the passage which carries either urine or semen. Semen is the fluid which is made up of the sperms and the prostatic fluid. Then we have to know the prostate gland. The prostate gland surrounds this. You can see here, this is the prostate gland. And the prostate gland surrounds where the, uh, the sperm ducts enter the urethra. And that area is surrounded by the prostate gland. Prostate, please get the spelling right, prostate gland. Then we have the ureters which open into the bladder. So these are the ureters. And they are opening this into the yellow area, which is the bladder, which is the urinary bladder. And then it opens into the urethra. And this is going to, of course, the urine is going to be passed out of the body through the urethra. We don't have to worry about the cowper's glands or the seminal vesicles. I'm not talking about these either because you just get confused. There's no need to talk about this. This is not in your syllabus. So the ones which are in your syllabus, we are just talking about that. Now coming to the functions, urethra transports sperms to the end of the penis during ejaculation. Sperm ducts transport sperm to the urethra. Prostate adds fluid to the sperms. And the seminal vesicles also add fluid to the sperms. We are not talking about that. Testes are the responsible for the production of sperm and production of the hormone testosterone. And so this is the important organ that we have to talk about. Then you can see the labelings here, scrotum, testes, urethra penis and the prostate. So the prostate gland is the part which is going to be surrounding it where the sperm ducts enter the urethra. Then another table which gives you the functions. I like to give you one or two tables because sometimes one table misses out something and then you can sort of get some more information from the other table. So you can pause the video here and make your notes. Uh, testes is a sexual organ that produces sperm. So meiosis takes place here releases the male sex hormones, androgen and testosterone, which cause physical and physiological changes in the male scrotum. A sac which covers the testes and holds them outside the body, protects the testes. Uh, the prostate gland secretes a fluid into the semen. The fluid activates the sperms. Sperm ducts carry sperms from the testes to the urethra. Urethra, a tube which carries urine from the urinary bladder, also carries sperms from the sperm ducts outside the body, semen and urine pass through the urethra at different times. There is in fact a sphincter muscle which controls this and either the urine will pass or the semen will pass. And penis, the organ from which semen mixture of sperms and fluids leaves the body and is deposited in the female tract during sexual intercourse. The female reproductive system, the functions, ovary produces eggs and the hormones estrogen and progesterone. So two hormones we're going to talk about in the ovaries and the female hormones and they produce the eggs or the ovum uh, and so meiosis is going to take place here. Then oviducts transport the ovulated egg or the embryo of fertilization has occurred. From the ovary to the uterus, the usual site of fertilization. Outer one third of the oviduct is where the fertilization is going to take place. Uterus receives and nourishes the embryo and then of course as soon as it takes a human form, then we don't call it embryo, then we call it fetus. And as soon as it's born, then it's called the baby. Vagina receives the penis during intercourse, serves as a birth canal. Uh, another table about the female reproductive system, slightly more comprehensive. Uh, you, you have to mix the two of them and so get to all the information. Ovaries produce the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Site of 
ovum or the egg cell development and ovulation takes place from the ovaries. Then fallopian tubes carry the ovum from the ovary to the uterus, usually the site of fertilization. Then the fimbria, which are the finger-like, you see the finger-like projections of the OV duct, and this is where the ovary is. So uh, they sweep the ovum into the fallopian tube following ovulation. Then the uterus, which is a pear-shaped hollow organ in which the embryo and fetus develop, is also involved in menstruation when the lining of the uterus is shed. Now the cervix separates the vagina from the uterus, holds the fetus in place during pregnancy. There's a sphincter muscle which keeps it closed and it dilates during birth to allow the fetus to leave the uterus. A vagina extends from the cervix to the external environment, provides a passageway for sperms and a passage for the menstrual flow of blood and functions as a birth canal. Now you must understand it also instead of just learning it, but you must understand it as we go along and we do the functions of it and we do more details of this. Now coming to a comparison of the egg or the ovum and the sperm. So the egg is the ovum which is produced by the ovaries uh, in the female tract and uh, the sperm is the one which is produced by the testes. So this will be called the male gamete. And we have to understand that these will be haploid or they will have half the number of chromosomes or they will have one of each pair of chromosomes. So haploid. Now, the comparison is very simple. Size-wise, the sperm cell is very small. The ovum is very much bigger, much larger because it has more cytoplasm in it. You can see the amount of cytoplasm in it. In this, the cytoplasm is very little. There is cytoplasm present in the sperm, but it's very minimal. Then the movement swim using a tail that lashes from side to side. You can see there's a tail which has, and the ovum poor thing does not move itself, moved along oviduct by cilia and peristalsis. The oviduct, which arises from the uterus, is uh, got these muscles in its wall, so it can have some sort of peristalsis. It also has cilia inside it. So the cilia help to propel it. So ovum by itself cannot do anything. So the ovum is released from the ovary, but it can't move here. So it has to be moved and then it has to implant in the uterus. So swim, uh, the sperm has a tail, uh, but the ovum poor thing does not uh, move itself. It is moved along the oviduct by cilia and peristalsis. So very important thing, we need to know this. Then food stores in the sperm cell very little uses sugar in the seminal fluid for respiration. While the egg cell has protein and fat in the cytoplasm enough to last till implantation in the uterus. Because you see the ovum has to be fertilized by the sperm. And the sperm only nucleus goes while this nucleus. So the nucleus of the sperm enters. So basically it's the cytoplasm which contains all the mitochondria. And that is why you get your uh, mother's mitochondrial DNA. Because the mitochondria has DNA as well. And that's a very important DNA called mtDNA, which you study again in the A-levels. Now, the number of chromosomes in both are haploid, 23, 23. Number produced, million produced constantly after puberty, often throughout life. While in the woman, only one a month after puberty until menopause, except when pregnant or taking the contraceptive pill. So she, the woman produces one ovum every month. And then when she goes into menopause around about the age of 50, then of course she stops uh, ovulating. Or when she's pregnant only then when she's not ovulating. Uh, during contraceptive pills also because we, uh, when she takes the contraceptive pill, then she stops ovulating. The medicine is such that it prevents ovulation. So because the woman doesn't want to get pregnant, so she doesn't want to ovulate. So no ovulation, no pregnancy. And that is when she will not ovulate and will not produce any ovum or egg cell. Now another diagram to show you this. Now what we need to understand is that the ovum is a single cell. It has cytoplasm in it. It has a nucleus which is haploid. And it has a layer of cells which is called follicle cells surrounding it which is called the corona radiata. And the important thing is the layer which it has around it. It's not a wall. It's a layer which is a jelly coat which is called the zona pellucida. And this is what is in your syllabus now because when the uh, sperm nucleus enters, now there are changes in this so that no more nucleuses can enter. 
so it prevents any further uh, the sperm's nucleus is entering now the human sperm is made up of uh, you can say there's a head which contains an acrosome an acrosome is a is a sort of an organelle which contains hydrolytic enzyme why does it contain hydrolytic enzyme the reason you've got to know is when the sperm comes near it it has to digest a pathway to reach the ovum because it is surrounded by these follicle cells now in order to do that the acrosome releases enzymes and these enzymes digest a pathway and then of course it has a nucleus it has a centrioles it has mitochondria and it has this called the head and the mid piece and the flagellum or the tail the tail or the flagellum now another very nice diagram to show you fertilization you can see the sperm nucleus is entering and this is the cytoplasm of the ovum then this is the zona pellucida or the jelly layer outside and then you got these follicle cells and uh, the cytoplasm of the ovum and the nucleus of the egg cell and you can see the acrosomes releasing the enzymes and digesting a pathway in the zona pellucida and then of course through the follicle cells and then of course the nucleus enters and then it will again reform and this will again further no nucleuses can enter this now so once fertilization has taken place now coming to the topic of secondary sexual characteristics what are they what are secondary sexual characteristics external features of an organism that are indicative of its gender but are not reproductive organs themselves you see if a girl is born she already has the ovaries she is born she is born with them at birth if a boy is born he has his testes but what are the secondary sexual or external features which happen at puberty round about their teens early teens mid teens depends so examples for the male are chest and abdominal hair facial hair hair in the armpits and a deeper voice in the female it is the hormone estrogen which is responsible the breasts grow pubic hair grows wide hips develop in the male it is the hormone testosterone which is produced by the testes in the female the estrogen is produced by the ovaries and in testosterone results in body hair growth voice breaks and muscle growth increases so secondary sexual characteristics are the later on features which are are found in the male and the female body now the timing is slightly different in the female it's only around 13 and in the boys it's around 15 but can be younger Uh, in the female maturation of the ovaries and enlargement of the vagina and the uterus development of breasts widening of the pelvis deposition of fat under the skin of the buttocks and thighs growth of pubic hair and hair under the arm monthly ovulation and menstruation and changes in behavior associated with sex drive in the male this around 15 development and enlargement of the testes scrotum penis glands of the reproductive tract increased skeletal muscle development enlargement of the larynx and deepening of the voice growth of pubic hair underarm hair body hair continuous uh, production of sperms so basically these are the male and female secondary sexual characteristics which are going to appear at different ages in girls it's a little earlier around age 13 and boys is around age 15 uh now we have uh, completed uh, this is the fourth video on chapter 16 16.4 but the remaining part of this chapter will go in another video which is a little more details will go in video 5 so actually there are five videos on this chapter so whenever you are revising it please see that you've done all these five videos on chapter 16 uh thank you and thank you for watching thank you very much